biggest minority you know about. I don't want to hear that gay trash, man. I got gay friends I've had on the show because you don't know them or it ain't who you want on the show. You got a problem with it? Preserving the rich history of black comedians stands as a collective responsibility, aiming to transcend racial divides. Figures such as Arsenio Hall have exemplified this mission, striving to uphold the dignity of black comedians. However, recent reports suggest Hall's disillusionment with his efforts, feeling they've been undermined by individuals like Tyler Perry, who, in his eyes, have slowed the progress achieved during his influential tenure. Arsenio Hall, a renowned stand-up comedian and actor, hosted a groundbreaking late-night talk show from 1989 to 1994. His show quickly became a sensation, offering a refreshing departure from the traditional late-night format. Great show. Hall gained fame for revolutionizing late-night television with his relaxed demeanor and diverse range of guests, notably Burton Richardson's extended introduction, drawing out the show's name Arsenio, before enthusiastically announcing Hall became a hallmark of the program's laid-back charm. The Arsenio Hall show broke barriers and left an indelible mark on American pop culture. Its influence on music and its commitment to diversity resonated deeply, making it a cultural touchstone and broadening late-night TV's appeal to a wider audience. Despite being off the air for over two decades, the Arsenio Hall show is still fondly remembered, with its impact evident in today's media landscape. Again, how smart Arsenio was. Smart enough to weather efforts by his competitors to keep big-name celebrities off his show. Hall is often lauded for reshaping public perceptions of political candidates, notably when he welcomed then-unknown candidate Bill Clinton onto his show in an impromptu move. Hall showcased Clinton's saxophone skills to a younger audience, influencing how political campaigns were conducted. Reflecting on this moment, Hall noted, I received some recognition for introducing him to a younger demographic and changing the nature of presidential campaigns. If the Arsenio Hall show had aired during the 2016 presidential election, it could have had a a significant impact, just like it did during Bill Clinton's campaign in 1992. Clinton's appearance on the show helped him connect with young voters and urban communities, including people of color. His cool demeanor and saxophone performance made him more relatable to demographics often feeling disconnected from politics. <laughs> In contrast, Hillary Clinton faced criticism for what some saw as insincere attempts to appeal to the black community. Bill Clinton's unique ability to bridge gaps and connect with diverse audiences gave him an advantage. If Hillary had the chance to showcase her relatability on The Arsenio Hall Show, it might have strengthened her appeal, especially among young and urban voters. The show's ability to humanize candidates could have influenced the election outcome. Cochran highlighted Hall's significant but often overlooked impact on global culture. Hall used his show as a platform for talented musicians of color, including hip-hop artists, introducing them to mainstream audiences. This was crucial at a time when there were few opportunities for black artists on TV. Cochran shared clips of memorable segments from the show, demonstrating Hall's commitment to showcasing diverse talent. Hall's show provided a space for artists like Luther Vandross, whose music touched the hearts of many. Vandross's songs like Let Me Take You Home resonated deeply with listeners. My first musical guest was this man, and Marla, I know, you know, that this is what I want. Although his personal struggles as a closeted gay man were often hidden from public view. Reflecting on Vandross's music now, listeners recognize the depth of his longing and realize the challenges he faced in expressing his true self. Despite his passing in 2005, Vandross's legacy lives on, contributing to the increasing acceptance of LGBTQ individuals in society. Vandross made a choice to keep his personal life private, partly to avoid upsetting his predominantly female fan base, and mainly to spare his mother any distress. LaBelle revealed this on The Bravo Show, Watch What Happens Live, shedding light on Vandross's struggles and decisions. Essentially, he didn't want to cause his mother any pain, even though she may have already known about his orientation. However, he wasn't ready to openly discuss it with the world. It makes one wonder if the continuation of Arsenio Hall's show could have helped accelerate societal acceptance and understanding. Unfortunately, the show was canceled due to declining ratings. Nevertheless, Queen Latifah organized a heartfelt farewell segment 
event where Vandross paid tribute to Hall, acknowledging his profound impact on both the show's audience and American culture overall. Vandross's words highlighted the deep affection and gratitude felt towards Hall, suggesting that his departure left a significant void in American entertainment. People love this man unconditionally, and he's been part of our lives and done so much for us. Vandross told the audience on Hall's final show, I'm sad to see you go because America is going to have a big chunk missing during the early 90s. At a time when many black comedians were heavily influenced by Richard Pryor, Arsenio Hall stood out by blending his own style of comedy with broad appeal. With his infectious smile, lively demeanor, and relatable perspective on life, he connected with audiences of all backgrounds. Throughout the initial five-year run of his nationally syndicated show from 1989 to 1994, Arsenio managed to make his humor universally relatable. He provided a platform for the black community, which was often overlooked in late-night television, addressing issues and perspectives that were otherwise neglected. During the era dominated by Jay Leno, Johnny Carson, and Conan O'Brien, the Arsenio Hall Show played a pivotal role in promoting artists of color to a wider audience. In the late 80s and early 90s, hip-hop culture had limited representation, typically confined to a two-hour segment on Yo! MTV Raps. Despite emerging as influential figures, acts like N.W.A. and Tupac were often portrayed as controversial by mainstream media. However, Arsenio Hall offered a platform for black artists such as Eddie Murphy, Michael Jackson, Will Smith, and Snoop Dogg to express themselves authentically on national television. Comedy has a unique power to inform and entertain, and the Arsenio Hall show showcased this by not only highlighting overlooked entertainers, but also tackling important issues facing urban communities. Hall brought together influential gangster rappers like Easy e Ice-T, and N.W.A., some from rival gangs, to perform We're All in the Same Gang, a powerful message against gang violence. He didn't stop there. Hall also hosted discussions on pressing topics, like bringing Magic Johnson to address HIV stigma and inviting Louis Farrakhan to talk about the Nation of Islam and Malcolm X's legacy. Amidst the backdrop of the LA riots and growing concerns about police brutality, Arsenio became a symbol of positivity and unity in the black community, even as competition grew from shows hosted by Letterman, Leno, and the emerging Jon Stewart. Despite its impact, the Arsenio Hall Show faced declining ratings and ended in 1994. But before its farewell, it made history by hosting an iconic hip-hop cipher featuring a tribe called Quest, MC Light, KRS-One, and others bidding Hall goodbye. After his talk show, Arsenio thrived as a comedian and actor, starring alongside Eddie Murphy in Coming to America and voicing Winston in the Ghostbusters cartoon. When CBS announced its return in 2013, fans were excited, but the revival highlighted ongoing issues. Police brutality still dominated headlines, and late-night TV remained mostly led by white hosts. In 2013, Arsenio returned, standing out among competitors like Stewart, Colbert, and O'Brien. His loyal audience, The Dog Pound, cheered him on with their signature fist-pumping, but despite their support, the show's revival was short-lived. While newer hosts like Trevor Noah have emerged, late-night TV still largely follows the patterns set by Stewart and Colbert. It's not enough to just include black voices. Their perspectives must authentically reflect the black experience. However, there's a shift in perception now, according to him, with influential figures like Tyler Perry gaining dominance. Perry's rise from the Atlanta theater scene to box office stardom with his Medea series series is impressive. But along with success come controversies, and Perry hasn't been spared from them, even clashing with powerful figures like Oprah. In Hollywood's competitive world, avoiding controversy is tough. Perry expanded into television with his hit sitcom House of Pain, but trouble brewed during syndication negotiations and plans for a spin-off titled Meet the Browns. Perry reportedly let go of four writers seeking union contracts, sparking industry uproar. Writer Terry Jackson voiced disappointment, saying they created over a hundred episodes, but were cut out when it came to syndication deals and spin-offs. Perry responded by taking control of writing duties, but his clashes extended beyond the writer's room. Actor unions barred their members from Perry's stage play, Medea, on the run, due to his refusal to sign union contracts, highlighting tensions over profit versus industry standards. After the success of House of Pain and Meet the Browns,
Jones, journalist Jamil Alemu penned an open letter to Perry, expressing discomfort with his use of stereotypes. She questioned the portrayal of Mother Deer by a tall man with prosthetic breasts, urging Perry to offer more respect to black characters. Spike Lee, a renowned director, also criticized Perry for perpetuating stereotypes, echoing sentiments shared by both black and white critics. Spike Lee argued that because of these stereotypical movies, Tyler Perry and others were setting records. He believed the industry could improve by avoiding bias in movies that feature one-dimensional characters. Tyler Perry's casting choices have sparked discussions about his business approach. Some say Perry often casts dark-skinned actors as villains and portrays light-skinned individuals as heroes, sparking debate among viewers. Chris Rock also noticed a recurring theme in Perry's movies, pointing out the limited portrayal of respectful, dark-skinned boyfriends. He suggested Perry's films could offer a wider range of characters. Using Tupac Shakur as an example, Rock speculated that if Tupac were alive, but in a Tyler Perry movie, he might be cast as the bad boyfriend. Rock's point echoed Spike Lee's criticism, suggesting that successful movies might owe their success to Perry's biased casting. Both Rock and Lee expressed concerns about such biases in the film industry. Colorism, particularly in Hollywood, has faced scrutiny, often sparked by social media campaigns. Harvey Weinstein's allegations of AS in 2017 shed light on the darker aspects of Hollywood's culture, prompting discussions about representation and bias in the industry. Following the uproar of the Me Too movement, Hollywood faced a string of scandals. Comedian Kevin Hart stepped down as the Oscars host in 2019 due to past homophobic tweets resurfacing. The Oscars So White campaign demanded more diversity in the Oscars and greater recognition for people of color, tarnishing Hollywood's once esteemed reputation. Back in the 1940s, actress Hattie McDaniel made history by winning the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in Gone with the Wind. She was the first African American to receive this honor. However, her victory was overshadowed by segregation at the Oscars, which effectively excluded her from the event. Fast forward 80 years, and the film industry still struggles with discrimination despite some progress. The 2020 Oscars faced racial controversies, including major snubs like Lupita Nyong'o's omission for her performance in the film U.S. Tyler Perry's movies also highlight this issue, where black-skinned actors often play villains. Steve Harris's portrayal of Charles McCarter in Diary of a Mad Black Woman is a notable example. Despite being a successful lawyer, Charles mistreats his wife Helen, revealing he has another woman, and kicking Helen out of their home. In the 1990s, black actors faced limited and stereotypical roles in Hollywood. Blair Underwood highlighted this issue, noting that most black actors auditioned for the same roles, regardless of their talent or fame. Tyler Perry's movies also reflect this trend. In Medea Goes to Jail, Iron Overman plays Linda Davis, an assistant district attorney engaged to Joshua. Despite her position, Linda engages in illegal activities like fraud and evidence tampering. Another actor, Brian White, portrays Randy in I Can Do Bad All By Myself, a villainous character who is abusive towards women. This pattern of negative portrayals of women in Tyler Perry's work has sparked concern among viewers. In his shows, Brothers and Sistas, the characters navigate various aspects of life, including relationships and careers. While Brothers focuses on the bond between four black men, Sistas centers on the lives of four single black women. However, the promotional material for Sistas emphasizes their single status rather than their friendships or careers, raising questions about the depth of their character development. Tyler Perry's film A Fall from Grace faced criticism for its portrayal of colorism. The movie follows Grace Waters, played by Crystal Fox, as she navigates love and betrayal. After a painful experience with her ex-husband's affair, Grace falls for a new husband, portrayed by McCord Brooks, only to uncover dark secrets about him. As the story unfolds, Grace finds herself accused of murder and fraud, leading to her imprisonment. Through its exploration of themes like love and betrayal, the film delves into the consequences of one's actions. Tyler Perry's movies, such as Acrimony, often spark discussions on social media. Some viewers praise Perry for shedding light on the struggle struggles faced by black women, while others criticize him for perpetuating negative stereotypes. Despite his success and contributions to the black community, Perry's portrayal of women and his creative control over his projects have drawn scrutiny. While some appreciate Perry's efforts to provide opportunities for black actors and actresses, others argue that his work should be more nuanced and inclusive. Critics point to instances where Perry's storytelling may reinforce harmful tropes or overlook the talents of other marginalized voices in the industry. 
industry. These debates underscore the importance of responsible representation in film and television. Not only actors, but black comedians also have concerns about Tyler Perry. Over the years, many black comedians have used cross-dressing in their routines to make people laugh. This involves them wearing dresses and heels to create funny moments. While this can be humorous, it also has deeper meaning. What are the effects of using cross-dressing for comedy? As Dave Chappelle pointed out, Tyler Perry has found success not only in gospel plays, but also in movies, bringing his unique style to a wider audience. His book, Don't Make a Black Woman Take Off Her Earrings, even made it to the New York Times bestsellers list. This makes us wonder why artists choose to challenge traditional masculinity, and why audiences enjoy seeing black men in dresses. Some believe that showing black men in a more feminine way might make them seem less threatening and more relatable to certain people. These portrayals could balance out the tough image often associated with hip-hop culture. In Hollywood, there's been criticism for perpetuating stereotypes about black people. Some argue that black artists sometimes feel pressured to take on stereotypical roles to keep their careers going. While things have improved, performers still have to make choices about the roles they accept. It's interesting that some modern stars like Kevin Hart, are willing to do cross-dressing roles. However, many people are tired of seeing black men in dresses. They think it's unnecessary and adds to stereotypes that already exist in society. In contrast to Tyler Perry, Arsenio Hall has been supportive of fellow comedians. His impact on late-night TV is still felt today, with groups like Migos appearing on shows like The Tonight Show and Ellen. While Arsenio might not return to late-night TV soon, his upcoming stand-up dates promise to bring laughter and wisdom from a legendary entertainer. That's all for today. See you in the next video. Goodbye for now.